As a magazine reader in the 1990s, it was common to see Electronic Gaming Monthly and Die Hard Game Fan rave about the hottest Japanese games that had no chance of coming to the United States. But import gaming wasn't always limited to the Far East, because there were also amazing looking games coming from Europe that I couldn't get my hands on. Now, thanks to the power of emulation, I'm finally able to play through a lot of those 8 and 16-bit classics, including the game that we're going to be talking about today, Tintin in Tibet. Released back in 1995 on the Super NES and Mega Drive, this is one of only a handful of games based on the popular Belgian comic series that started all the way back in 1929. With globe-trotting antics, cartoony graphics, tons of cinemas, and a pretty great ending, this is a legitimate hidden gem that anybody outside of Europe missed out on. Turn back now if you don't want to know what happens next, because today we're going to spoil the story and ending for Tin Tin in Tibet on the Super NES. This is Game Over, the early years. Tin Tin is at it again, and this time he's taking a train to the Haokao village found deep in the Chinese mountains. But it's not gonna be that easy, as our hero finds out when the tracks leading to the village have been destroyed. Worse yet, there's a man in the water who desperately needs our help. His name is Chang, and he quickly becomes one of Tin Tin's close friends. All this is important because back in the hotel we learned that Chang's airplane has crashed in the Himalayas. Oh no, is he dead? Well, according to Tin Tin's dream, Chang is still alive, but he's in urgent need of help. Our hero knows what he needs to do, and that's to fly to Nepal and rescue his dear friend. The good news is that Tin Tin is able to track down a few juicy leads in Kathmandu. Unfortunately, the bad news is that there's a terrible storm on the way. The even worse news is that one of the leads reveals that Chang died in the plane crash. Ah, Tin Tin's dream was wrong. But you know what? He's not ready to give up on that dream, so he finds a Sherpa named Tharki to help him look for the wreckage. Much like that other guy, Tharki's convinced that Chang is dead. He's even been to the crash site. But with a few polite and well-reasoned retorts, Tharki agrees to help. They'll set out in three days' time. I don't know why they didn't just set out the next morning, because the game skips right to the mountain climb. You know what? This is probably a good time to mention that Tin Tin is not only being accompanied by Tharki, but also Captain Haddock and, of course, the dog Snowy. This turns out to be a bit of a liability because Tin Tin's adorable pooch falls down the cliff and lands in the Roaring River. Just like before, our hero swims to the rescue and saves Snowy. Ugh, that might have been dangerous, but it has nothing on this scary downhill run. This leads to a treacherous climb up the snowy mountainside, which means that we must be close to the crashed airplane. Oh, hey, here it is. And sure enough, there are no survivors to be found. Tintin and Snowy go out searching, only to find a nearby cave that looks promising. Oh, would you look at that? It's a message from Chang confirming that he survived the crash. Unfortunately, this does not convince Tharki, who strongly recommends the team turn back. But just before they're about to make a final decision, our hero sees a scarf up on the mountain. He knows that this is Chang leading the way, and Tin Tin is not going to turn back now. This leads to an incredibly tense level, where the two men slowly ascend the cliff, swinging to safe platforms and pretty much doing everything they can to not fall to their deaths. This makes way to an even stronger snowstorm, which doesn't look to be letting up and threatens our team's safety. And just when it looks like our heroes can't go any further, they end up finding salvation in the form of a Lama Monastery. Now, you might think that a bunch of monks would go out of their way to help a missing person, but you would be wrong. Before they'll even point our hero in the right direction in the vaguest way possible, 
You'll first need to do a bunch of stupid odd jobs around the monastery, such as cleaning up the library, hitting a bunch of gongs, ringing the right bell, and so on and so forth. It's only after this that we learned that there was a young boy who was seen going into the cave where the Yeti lives. Wait, Yeti? Okay, yeah, that sounds urgent. Hey, thanks for hanging on to that life or death information until the last second. It's not like time is of the essence or anything. Man, these monks are assholes. Thankfully, Tintin was able to track down the right cave, and sure enough, there's a Yeti. Or rather, there's a Yeti shadow chasing after us. The trick is to avoid the Yeti by hiding and jumping over the shadow and just running away whenever it's possible. Which I have to say is really good life advice in general. Tintin eventually finds Chang, who is still alive, but definitely hurt. And at long last, this is what happens next. That's right, Tintin in Tibet is one of those rare games where Yeti is somehow more helpful than a bunch of monks. <sighs> That's a crazy twist. The truth is, there's a lot to like about this simple yet effective ending. For starters, I'm a big fan of the way they used the frames that look like they came directly out of the original comics. I also appreciate that they didn't clutter up the story with too much. There isn't some grand conspiracy or a plot to take out Chang, but rather a straightforward story that ends in a heartwarming way. I like that. This works as a great entry point for the character and his adventures. And it's a shame that we didn't see a string of increasingly convoluted sequels. Yeah, American gamers really missed out because Tin Tin in Tibet is more than a fine mess. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Game Over, The Early Years. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new episodes almost every week. Oh, last week we posted two episodes. Don't worry, we're not going to do that this week. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite comic book game? It can be new or old, just as long as it originated as a comic book. Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back shortly with a review of The Chameleon, plus a review of a COVID-themed horror game called The Wine that'll be coming out later this month. If that sounds good to you, then I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then, 